Hello and welcome to this episode of The State of Mirrorless, our series of video interviews with photographers and industry experts about the world of uh, interchangeable lens mirrorless camera systems. Uh, today it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Thomas Leutert, uh, who is a, a Swiss uh, street photographer. And uh, he is a, a book author, he has published several ebooks and uh, he uh, con conducts workshops uh, in many cities in the world. So let's uh, just give uh, the microphone to, to Thomas and please tell us a bit about yourself, about your photography, uh, how did you decide to, to start shooting, to doing street photography and what, what do you like about street photography in particular? Hello everybody, my name is Thomas Leuthardt. As already mentioned, I'm from Switzerland. About six years ago, I decided to buy a DSLR camera and about a year later, I figured out that shooting on the street is much more interesting than shooting in a studio or shooting with, with models. Because with the models, you always have to first get a model, you have to make, have used makeup, you have to wait, you have to shoot. It's all much more difficult than when you just go out, walk down the streets and you just take a shot from anything you like and anything you see. And this is what, uh, what interests me at the moment, that I can just try to make something interesting out of an ordinary moment anywhere in this world, in any city I could travel to. Cool. And, um... Um, you, you you also do workshops, right? Or uh, you do photo walks? Yes, I do photo walks. I, always when I travel, I try to organize a photo walk just to, to meet other photographers in that city that they can show me around. I sometimes do workshops around Switzerland, in Europe, sometimes even further. But uh, I'm not... I like doing workshops, but not too much, because when I do a workshop, there is a lot of teaching and only a little of shooting. I meet also a lot of people, but I think it's more interesting just to go out and shoot and not to do too much of uh, training or organization stuff. I, I read several of your ebooks. I think maybe I read them all. Uh, can I say that you have a, a passion for, uh, for sharing your, your knowledge? And what drives you to, to, to street photography? Is that accurate to say so? Yes, that's right. I once decided to write down my knowledge or what I have learned so far. First, it was just a blog. And then somebody said, why don't you write a book? And then I thought, OK, writing a book is not that simple. You have to find someone publishing it. And then I just thought, OK, you can just publish a PDF document. And since I was sure that it's too difficult to protect it and ask for money, I will just share it for free because my goal is not earning a lot of money with photography. It's just to have fun and meet other people, travel, and yes, share my knowledge. And that's how it happened. I just published a PDF document. I think it was about two or three years ago, and it was very... Uh, Yes, people liked it very much. There was not a lot of other information out there. And of course, also because it was free, that was also part of the success. So as I understand, you, you have a day job which uh, uh, allows you to dedicate your free time to, to photography without having to, to worry about uh, sales and marketing and, and stuff like that. Is that right? Yes, that's right. At the moment, I work 60% as an IT professional for the local government. So I normally work from early morning till lunchtime. And then I have the whole afternoon off to do several activities, not only shooting, also like marketing, social media, contacting people, answering emails, organizing workshops. So I have a lot of time. And since I don't have a family, I even have more time. So you should you should really teach everybody how to get a job with the Swiss government. Actually, more than yes, yes, it's, uh, it's well paid, it's very secured, and it gives me a lot of spare time. Good. So uh, 
when I contacted you a few days ago, uh, you told me you were in Africa, and uh, particularly in Addis Ababa. Uh, and you take several trips across the globe, uh, from what I understand. Uh, is there any place in particular, any city that you really love for going to for photography? I think it's mainly the not that famous places which I like. For example, I was in Bucharest, I was in Yerevan, that's Armenia. I was in Beirut some years ago for several times and I think those cities are much more interesting than New York, London or Paris like everybody wants to go to. Of course New York is interesting but I like to go to cities where people normally don't go to like Addis Ababa which is uh, deepest Africa and where there the people are completely different and it's not like a western city as we know it. Sure, it was a bit special, it was a bit difficult. You are the, the only white person or Western person in the whole city, more or less. When you walk down the street, you see maybe five people with the same skin color as you are, which is, first of all, interesting to see that you are a stranger, a real stranger. You can wear and you can carry what you want. They still see that you are a tourist. And since the port is pretty high there, it's a bit difficult because when they see a tourist, they start begging, they try to show you the city, earning some money, or they just want to talk to you. But this happens like every five or two minutes, so it's a bit difficult to walk down the street without being talked to by somebody. Is there any um, something that people need to be <clears throat> to be really aware? Uh, about shooting strangers in, the, in those places, do you do you try to learn something about the, the customs, the laws that are uh, that apply to a specific place, or do you just go there and sh try to take photos of people and see how they react? And did you ever had any specific problems in in some places in this respect? Normally I don't read a lot about the city because I would like to explore it in my way, with my eyes, through my lens. Of course the first day I'm pretty, yes, I'm, I'm not that offensive, I just try to, to, to look a lot, to observe how people react to the camera because you normally don't know how people react in a new city, it's always a bit different. But I normally just try it out and I will quickly see how people react to my camera and how the, the culture of being, let's say, photographed is in, in Africa. It was a bit difficult because people don't really know cameras. Everybody liked to see somebody with a camera, but when you po point the camera to the person, they don't want to be on the picture. For them, it's somehow not usual or comfortable to be photographed. And I had one experience when I wanted to take a portrait of a person begging on the street, but just actually a face shot because he had a very strong, strong eyes and very interesting look. And then a lady just asked me, why do you do that? Have you asked him? There was a lot of discussion, uh, a loud discussion. And suddenly there were like 30 people around me. Everybody was wanted to see what's going on, wanted to listen. And I looked around and everybody I was the only white person and I thought, okay, maybe it's not <laughs> the right place to have a discussion because I'm, I was wrong there. I was, I was not fitting into this situation and I was sure I, I'm, I did something wrong. So I apologized and I walked away. And it was quite uh, intense to, to feel that because when you are in Europe, you just have a conversation with, with one person. When he was not agreeing to take his pictures, then you say, okay, I delete it. But there it was suddenly like a crowd of people around you and everybody was interesting to see what's going on. Wow, it takes some, takes some courage to do, to do that, I guess. Of course, but I think the more courage, courageous you are, the further you get or you get, yes, you have to be, you have to be uh, interested in things, you have to get close and you also have to be courageous to, to do that. And if you don't do it, it will be difficult to make some interesting pictures. So switching a bit our discourse into 
gear equipment. Um, do you you use mirrorless cameras, small cameras, and I think you use uh, uh, Olympus systems, micro four thirds, which are pretty small. Do you feel that that has changed the way that people perceive you when you are shooting them with a small and obtrusive camera uh, with respect to a, a big DSLR? Yes, I'm sure that since I changed to a mirrorless camera, I have much less discussions with people because they don't realize that I take their pictures. Especially now I have an Olympus EM10. The good thing about this camera is the, the display. You can uh, flip. flip, yes. So I can take a picture without putting the camera to my face. So I can make it from the belly or the hip and still have full control of the picture while a person with DSLR always has to put it onto his or her face and this is much more intrusive and with a mirrorless camera people don't really see when I take a picture and this is much more stealthy let's say I can even put it camera up make a picture from from the top with this uh, swivel display so I think it has improved my way of photography because people don't see me as a photographer, they more see me as a tourist. Because it looks more like a tourist camera than a real professional photo or DSLR camera. So your, your choice was to, to use Olympus uh, cameras. Uh, any particular reason for that choice? I, my first mirrorless camera was a Lumix GF1. And I was very happy with this camera. I was, uh, it was the first time I used a mirrorless camera and it was at very, I took some good pictures. The, the black and white was really strong. And then the OMD came out and they had this, uh, this flip display. So I decided to go for the Olympus OMD because it looked nice. It was much faster. The autofocus was faster. And that was about two and a half years ago. So I, I stuck with Olympus because, yes, they do a camera or they provide a camera which I can use on the street and which can do everything I, I need and is also affordable and, yes, that's, that's the main reason. Yeah. Um, what, what are your favorite lenses when, you, when you're walking around? Normally I just use the 17 millimeter because the, the OMD has a crop factor of 2, so this equals 34 millimeter. I take probably 95% of the shots with this 17 millimeter. And I also have a 45 millimeter which I use to take portraits or details or when I don't get as close as I like, then I use the 45. But I only use these two lenses. I have some more, but they, I don't use them for street photography. You, <clears throat> I, seeing your work, uh, it seems to me that you almost exclusively or exclusively uh, shoot or publish black and white photos, which is a typical stylistical choice for, for street photography. It's very classical and so on. So I wanted to ask, do you uh, shoot black and white directly in camera, so you are able to see black and white through the viewfinder or the LCD display, or do you shoot RAW and then post-process uh, on the computer later? Actually, I shoot RAW, but the photo is visible on screen in black and white, so the preview is black and white, but when I shoot, shoot RAW, it remains in color in the camera, so I still see it in color, but on the display I see it in black and white, which helps me to see it as close as the end result after I post-processed it, and this helps me a lot to see how it will come out in the end. But I do all the post-processing on the PC, so the camera does no post-processing. Okay, so you, you convert to black and white in, uh, on the PC. Yes. What, what software do you use? What, what is the, do you use any plugins like Nick software on one? No, I just use Lightroom and I do normal black and white conversion, nothing special. So my post-processing takes maybe one minute per photo. That's my goal. And this is normally possible when I have more than one minute, there's something wrong with the picture. Then I should delete it. 
still still talking about um, well and, and before we before that question you make me made me want to ask another one uh, which is what is your key ratio when you go out how many photos do you shoot during a typical walk and how many of them you normally consider keepers this is a bit difficult to say but I would say a normal walk of about half a day like four hours would probably be 100 to 200 photos or frames not seen sometimes I take five or ten pictures in of one scene and the keeper rate is maybe f less than five percent maybe two and a half percent out of this 200 maybe five pictures mm -hmm. yeah that sounds pretty typical and, and do you try to go out every day so if you know that no. a huge memory no the problem is after five years you have you have seen a lot, you have taken pictures of a lot of different scenes and it's very difficult to find new stuff because if somebody is reading the newspaper, it's a guy reading the newspaper, I've taken maybe 20 shots of that and you have like, you can tick it off and you have to find something new. And here in Switzerland I don't shoot very often, maybe every other weekend and I do most of my photography when I travel. Do you see yourself uh, trying different genres, uh, st stepping a bit outside of pure street photography, I other do, kinds of photography? Yes, I do that as kind of a diversity or to relax or do something else. I shoot like once a month or every other month the, the daughter of my brother. She's two and a half years old right now and I just make pictures every now and then just to document her life so that's a challenge I sometimes shoot concerts of uh, friends who have a band and I sometimes just take a macro lens and go out in, the na in nature and just make some macro shots so I try also to make different photos different genres just to to get some alternatives because always shooting street is a bit it's getting boring all the time yeah, I can imagine that. So, uh, talking again about uh, equipment, is there anything in the equipment that you use that you uh, either don't like or would like it to be different? Is there something that the your manufacturers like Olympus could do to make your life easier as a photographer? I was at the photo kino and the guys from Olympus asked me the same questions. What would I improve on the OMD and the first thing I was, I was saying is that the sensor could be a bit bigger because uh, it's a micro fourth third sensor crop factor of two it's a bit small so it would increase the quality if the sensor would be bigger but of course it's not something that I can do easily and my second wish would be to have a, a native black and white camera that the camera would only shoot in monochrome that would be quite interesting to to have because then you don't have to decide color or black and white and you don't have to explain yourself and say I have a black and white camera that's why I shoot in black and white well, you, you could get a like a monochrome I could but it's first of all manual focus and it's a bit overpriced yeah. <laughs> that's true uh, anyway so um, what I wanted to ask again um, where do you get your inspiration from? Are there any photographers that you really admire that you want to, to talk uh, to tell us about? I don't admire a lot of photographers. I follow some people through the different social media networks. I don't know like all the, his the guys who made history. I know of course I know Presson, I know Vivian Meyer, Elliot Derwitt and stuff like that, the famous ones. But I don't read a lot of books actually, I just go out, sometimes I get inspiration from just sitting on a bench or standing on a, on a corner and look at people and or maybe reading magazines or, or looking at other people's pictures. It must not be something special or something, somebody very good, it's just 
little things that you can get from other people or other situations which can trigger some, some creativity for a new project. You get a lot of uh, a lot of followers on social media between Flickr and, and other various websites, and I think also with your uh, um, sorry phone. <laughs> Wait, uh, I was saying you get a. Um, oh, we cut this one. Let me start again. Um, you get a lot of followers on social media through on Flickr. I think you were active there. You've been active there for many years and other social media channels. And with your books, maybe people now see you as a sort of an, an authority, somebody to, to look up to. And does that, uh, uh, how do you feel about that? I think it's it can be very nice because you can just write, uh, make a post on Facebook or Google Plus. I will be in, let's say, Istanbul next weekend. Who would like to shoot? And then five or ten or twenty people would show up. So it's very easy to find other street photographers in a certain city. But you will also get a lot of emails with sometimes pretty stupid questions. Why do you shoot in black and white? Or what's your post-processing method and stuff like that. Things I have written down or where there are YouTube videos. So this is a bit annoying. And a lot of people ask about gear, if they should buy this or this or this lens. And last time I was just saying, you have the best camera that is out there. Go out and shoot. Don't ask me stupid questions. Like people 50 years ago did good pictures with very bad equipment. So don't ask me if this or this or this lens. You just take what you have and you have to go out. That's There's a lot of talk about gear and, and things that are not really relevant. People should more show pictures and discuss about pictures than gear or other things like post processing is also something that is overrated. Yeah, that, that, I, I agree completely even though our show is a bit about gear but we always also always try to uh, talk a bit about photography in general then just stick simply to what works, uh, what lens or what camera or what format works. Uh, anyway, yeah, do you um, are you planning to, to somehow, uh, I would not say exploit your popularity, but somehow uh, try to use your popularity to uh, to turn your photography into more of a business? Or are you, are you happy with just uh, uh, it being a hobby and just getting to know people and walking around cities? I'm pretty happy how it is now. I started to create video trainings. I did a street photography video training on a platform called Udemy. And this was also quite successful. I earned quite a lot of money, which was not expected. And I maybe do some more videos, but I'm, I don't want to do it for money. I have my day job and I like my day job. I like photography to be a hobby and I can go out to shoot if I like, but I don't have any pressure that forces me to go out and make good pictures or to produce some books or trainings or workshops. It's much more relaxing when you don't have the pressure to do it. And that's what I like. Good. So I would like to thank you for being with us today. And I'm sure our audience will appreciate your uh, insights into street photography. Is there anything else that you would like to to tell us, to tell our audience? Well, I think it's photography or mainly street photography is a good way of meeting other people, of traveling. It's I think it's more about networking than gear or in the end make, making pictures is kind of bringing us together, but it's uh, much more interesting to talk to people sometimes. So it's not only the, the camera or picture itself, it's also the people who meet, who is, which is uh, quite interesting. Good. So uh, final uh, words, where can people find you online? People can find me probably easiest on my website, which is thomas.leutart.photography. There you find all the links to the social media, or you just enter my name in Google, and then you will find my most 
popular work or my books and things like that. All right. So thank you again. And uh, I hope uh, this was interesting for everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Good night. Bye bye.